guest is Lisa Catherine Cohen. She is an amazing lyricist. She has earned two platinum albums, three number one hits, countless film and TV appearances, uh, worldwide a renaissance artist. She's also a painter, a teacher of guided autobiography, and a spoken word performer. So let's give a big warm welcome to Lisa Catherine Cohen. Every year to escape blizzarding, freezing, cold Canadian winter, my parents would come to Palm Desert. Two months into their four-month condo rental, Dad died. When someone you love dies, there is so much to do. Doing, doing, all kinds of things to do. You have to first find out if they're a donor. At 85, he wasn't. You call the funeral home. Uh, if somebody dies in a whole other country, which he did, there's even more doing, doing, doing. You have to, we had to quickly write an obituary, get it into the Toronto papers. I gave my parents my Price Club card, which became Costco. My parents bought the entire store. They'd had their car driven down, and now they had to early get it back, loaded with all this stuff. They bought toothbrushes for the rest of 10 lifetimes. Then, having paid everything up front, they would like their two months rent back. The realtors started a fight to, to a grief-stricken family. Not the right time to do that. So then you had to, we had to get the death certificate from the hospital in order to get the compassion fare from the airline. So with my father in a lead box in the hold and my now husbandless mother, me, my brother, his six-year-old son, flying a red eye, to get to the funeral in Toronto. For us, by the time we got there, it was six in the morning, nine Eastern time. Funeral is happening in a few hours. My brother and family, some of whom had flown in from Vancouver, are in a jacuzzi behind two closed doors. I am kneeling at the edge of this huge Cal King bed, pawing through my father's night table, looking for something of value he might have inadvertently left me. The mo there wasn't going to be any money. His business partner went nuts and embezzled everything. So what do I find in there? The first thing I find in there are a bunch of his old Kissinger-like glasses. And I think, you know what? I'm going to make sunglasses out of these, which I actually did. <laughs> the next thing I see in there that looks interesting are there's three little snap-closed leather cases. One of them has a pair of dye in it. One has a loop in it, the thing you look at negatives with up close. And the third one, I know what's in there. I've seen it before. I open the case, and there they are. My father's sterling silver engraved, working 19th century dueling pistol cufflinks. Long time ago, way before I was born, my father shot one of these things under the table in a fancy restaurant, and flying gunpowder hit Ethel Merman in the bosom while she's having dinner with Mickey Rooney. The press was there. Too bad we lost that paper article, newspaper article. Point being, these things do a lot of damage. I'm being really careful not to touch the trigger. I pull one out. Bang! It's shot myself and the th blood is now spurting out of my thumb like, a fa like the Trevi Fountain in Rome. First thing you do is you grab the base of the wound. You just automatically become a human tourniquet. My mother has heard the bang and comes running like in slow motion around this foot stadium of bed, 
grabs me by the inside of my elbow, dragging me around the bed. I'm scrambling to get back up onto my feet, down the little hallway into the guest bathroom. I can see her anguished face in the mirror behind me. She puts her one arm around my waist, the other hand turns on the cold water faucet, and with her other hand pushes my hand under the cold water. Oh my God, it hurts. I can see red water flying around in the sink and little flecks of black. My whole palm has been charred and pieces of my palm are falling. I look up to the ceiling and I say, thanks, Dad. Then I see it. And I say aloud, can't you just see the Inquirer headline? Father shoots daughter from grave with loaded cufflink. <laughs> we start laughing, 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 laughing so hard, tears start falling out of our eyes. And you know what? This is the, we've been so busy. People get so busy after a death because you don't want to feel what you're feeling. But out comes these tears, and now we're feeling, and we think that my father is going to come running down the hallway, but he isn't. He's not there anymore, but he was. It's so surreal, isn't it? So ultimately, you know what? You're going to have to feel what you feel. Some people don't feel anything or cry for a long time afterwards. Some people cry for years and years. And the thing is, I realized that my father crossed over into the other side without his whole family. He just lost his whole, we lost one person, but he lost everybody he loved so deeply. So I believe that your relatives on the other side don't want you to be sad forever and ever. They want you to be here with your family, resume your life, live with the living. Bottom line, I still have a scar you can see in the middle of my thumb. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please click, let us know that you liked it, share a comment, share a story of your own. We'd love to hear from you. And come check out Shine Storytelling each month in Santa Monica. Thank you.